and welcome back to The Dog in the Pond. I hope you've enjoyed the show so far. This week we have James Redmond and Ben Hall. Let's get them on. Hi, guys. Woo! Hey. Hey. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm very well. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, good. I feel very privileged to have kind of two of the the founding members almost on because I know you were on when it first started, Ben, and James, you weren't that far after, were you? No, I think, yeah, Ben auditioned for episode one, didn't you, mate? Yeah, mate, I, I, um, yeah, I was kind of, I was, yeah, I, I did audition with the, the original batch of, um, of, of people and, uh, yeah, I'd started episode three. Wow. Yeah. Um, when were you, when were you, Jim, when, when was your first one? I'm, I, mine was sort of April 98, so sort of two years in, I think, or two and a half, maybe. Yeah. Um, Kelly, when did you start? 99, I think. Yeah. Ah. I think. So we, we were all, I think I was there, I was certainly there with you, James, because we did scenes together on that bloody barge. Yeah. <laughs> I remember our, our first scene, actually. I remember um, thinking this would be quite easy. I'd, I'd done a, a scene with Gary and uh, David, and I thought, oh, this is fine. And then I, I did a scene with you, and you were so good, I thought, flipping heck. <laughs> <laughs> I, better, I better get better, pretty sharpish, I'm doing scenes with her. Oh, that's, God. Oh, that's very kind. I thought you were going to say some horrible story then. I was yeah, waiting yeah. for it. <laughs> I remember as well. I remember James's. I remember my first scene I did with you, Jim, was was out um, outside uh, uh, Mr. Cunningham's shop. Yeah. Can't, can't remember what it was called. Can't remember what that place was called. Um, Drive and by. Was it, was it that? All I know is the, the, yeah, uh, the video shop at that point. Oh, yeah. Right. Video, yeah. Videos. Remember them? <laughs> yeah. God. Have you got this? We've only got it on Betamax, I'm afraid. Oh, I've only got VHS. <laughs> oh, those are the days. Also, do you remember in that shop as well? It was it was it was full of snacks and oh, they used God. to. They used to inject all, all of the all of the confectionery. This is true. This they used to inject all the confectionery with just some minuscule and sure, totally legal amount of TCP. Other brands of disinfectant are available, and they, they injected them. But what was amazing was it meant that everyone who sort of took the chocolates, uh, none of us had a sore throat at all for years and years <laughs> and years. We were all absolutely fine. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I remember my first scene with you, Jim. Was 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 a. Uh, you had to turn up and and like obviously everyone's nervous on the first day we're like them on our experience or, or whatever you, anybody is but i just remember you had to have a pint of milk and i was just thinking why are they giving him why are they giving this character some sort of wacky pint of milk so there's a plastic carton of milk and you had to finish the scene and sort of just go sort of drinking nonchalantly and be like yeah guys see you later and they just bin the milk and i remember you'd got to get to the end and sort of get through the scene and be like have i said anything i said everything Oh, Christ, the milk! <laughs> yeah. I was so nervous because I'd not done any acting at all. Still haven't. And, um, <laughs> you know, I'd, I'd come, I hadn't done even stage school or, you know, school plays or anything. I was so nervous. And in the audition, I was just myself. And I was lucky that the scene they gave me was kind of easy to learn and wasn't far away from my character. But then getting onto set and not knowing about hitting marks and avoiding shadowing each, each other and not o- overlapping people and getting all your lines right. And then, you know, oh, yeah, I'm in character or oh, a prop shit all at once. I was just so nervous. Yeah. There are yeah. like really experienced actors that can't do props and lines. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. you can't you can't do lines and props or you can't walk and talk. That's true. It's true. Okay. <laughs> also, also, I mean, like, like through that process as well, you get like a lot of experienced older actors on that have done like you know their cvs were just absolutely full of rsc and all this and the other and um and then they'd come onto set and they'd be you know sort of all at sea really because they weren't used to that kind of the, the speed that we were smashing it out and and like you know like the the amount that we were doing was absolutely extraordinary and they're like well normally i have four weeks to prepare for this scene, love and instead of being handed it on set in three minutes you know yeah. it's um and so yeah it was it, I, it was i think what the, one of the best things that um about audios uh, uh, i'm sure you guys agree is is that it was such a brilliant training ground for us all you know it doesn't matter where you are whether you're just started or whether you've been doing it for years it was there was nothing there was nothing quite like it and probably still isn't yeah. Do you think when it first started, Ben, that you realised what it would become? Because it it was like the first kind of show of its kind, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. There was um, yeah. I was amazed that nobody had done like a sort of a like a teen because it initially when I auditioned for it, it was called Teen Soap. <laughs> it was. It was. It wasn't called Hollyoaks. It was called Teen Soap. Wow. They didn't have. A, they didn't even. Have, you know, they didn't have a title for it. So it was um. So yeah, but it kind of I wondered why there was nothing like that around, and and um, 
Yeah, I mean, it, it was just Phil, though, isn't it? I mean, Phil was just leaps and bounds ahead of his time. Look, I mean, everything he's done, it sort of pushed the boundary, isn't it? Like Grain Chill. I mean, Grain Chill just absolutely, there's nothing like Grain Chill, you know. Um, and and then Brookside and and pushing all the boundaries that way. And then Holly as well just absolutely ripped it all up again. So in answer to your question, yeah, I mean, I all I knew was that, like, I desperately wanted to be a part of it all. And um, I managed to, uh, I went up for Kurt that was played by Jeremy Edwards uh, like originally and I had all of his um, his scenes and the auditions and stuff and, and I auditioned um, uh, with uh, Nick Picard um, whatever, whatever happened to him and um, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, anyway so got all the way through and it was like Phil Redman was there and Ken Horn, Dorothy Andrews was there and all these different all these different people. Dorothy Andrews was the casting director and loads of different directors and people, Rick Mellis and all sorts of people. And um and I stumbled over um this the scene, this final scene. It was all like it was kind of a bit of a soapbox moment, you know. But I sort of, sort of stumbled over it. I remember Phil Riven just looking at me, just going, and everybody going, and I turned around to Nick, who just had that look of just like, mate, you balls that up. <laughs> but doing that smart in a smiley way, though, you know, Nick so genuine was to be like <laughs> and i just turned around i thought i thought oh god i've done it i've, I've ruined it all and i just turned around and i, I looked at I looked, I knew exactly who phil Reverend was obviously and just went god, who wrote this and he went oh uh, i did actually you know and so i went oh well man i was gonna say this 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 is very good what do you do for living, sir? can i ask and um anyway basically just bs my way out of the situation and and um yeah, sure enough, I've got this part, Lewis, which I'm not sure really existed to any greater or lesser extent. But but they um and what happened? What happened? They wouldn't they wouldn't write me into. They had like an initial kind of twelve episodes. It went out like one episode a week at the time, and um and I was like in like a couple of those, but then nothing else. And um they asked so because because I had like zero income and there was no retainer or anything like that either. I I went off and um I went off and did a panto in Oldham. And, um, <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, and I just remember I was playing I was playing Dick Whittington in the uh, in Old, Oldham Coliseum with uh, an actor called uh, Anthony Oldenshaw who went on to Emma Dale and all sorts of different people. It was brilliant. And um, I remember getting a phone call like on the dress rehearsal, and it was just like a, it was a Liverpool number. It's like, hi Ben, it's Vicky in the uh, in Hollyoaks uh, um, office here, and uh, just to let you know that. Uh, can we have you in at eight o'clock tomorrow morning for scenes 16, 16, 18 and 64. I was like, what? And she was, yeah, Ben, so I have you in tomorrow morning for eight. I was like, one, I don't have a script. Two, I don't have a contract. And three, <laughs> I can't tomorrow because I'm ridding London of the rats. And, um, and uh, yeah. And so, and so basically what happened was like, they went, oh, okay then. And gave my storyline to this new character, this uh, called, um, called uh, the evil rob hawthorne and oh, basically wow. that's how uh yeah my character ended up yeah that's how rob hawthorne came into it and then i was brought in on a contract um <laughs> a, a little bit later but yeah yeah mad wow. isn't it and, um, but what's what's dorothy andrews doing now and um, so she was I, I was um teaching at a school that i teach at and she was coming in as part of casting there so she's oh, still right. casting, yeah, yeah. Oh gosh. And she and she just doesn't look any different either. This is the casting director following. She just doesn't look any different. Well, yeah. yeah. When, you, when yeah. you see her next, send her our love. Yeah. Yeah, but, will do. Jo, will jo, do. she stitched she stitched me up once so badly. So it was at the it was at the Manchester Evening News Theatre Awards, and um, they're like a daytime thing in, um, in in Manchester, and they all have all the great of the good of the north come in. And, and receive an award and stuff. And I remember it was like Steve Coogan was there and, and you know, I'm a big fan of Coogan. And I was like, ooh. And Jim Davison was there comparing. Like, it was all a bit all a bit odd. And um, and because, like, you know, as we all did as soon as we were invited to anywhere that, with free booze, we all got stuck in. <laughs> and um, and Dorothy Andrews was sat at another table and I was there sort of just drinking wine. It was a daytime. I was a bit, a bit sloshed or whatever. She could clearly see that I was getting a bit loud and a bit, bit, a little bit leery. So she came over and just whispered in my ear and went, Ben, I'd like you to present an award in two awards time. All right. <laughs> and just left me to it. And I'm not to, to this day, I've never drunk so much coffee so quickly. Like, God, God, God. 
I just remember standing there. I, all I had to say is literally, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome on stage Steve Coogan. I just remember picking up the card, just thinking, I can't read it. It's just it was like, God, and just got, got, you know, I was like, oh, oh, awful. But yeah, but, but do uh, <laughs> send, send, it, send it my love. It's, uh, well, it's yeah. funny that you mentioned the partying because we've had two shows of this show now. And the first one, um, Helen and Lee kind of painted us as being really um, mature and professional. And then... Um, last week's show, Gemma and Alex um, kind of said a different story. James, what's your take on it? Well, when I got <laughs> there, uh, it was a mixture, isn't it? I mean, I, when, when I got there, I was so nervous and inexperienced that I just wanted to fit in. So I was sort of just going out and hanging out with everyone the whole time. And um, I was with Davinia a lot. And uh, Davinia was, was a bit of a party girl. So I was going out, sort of hanging out with her and, and Nick a bit and um, the rest of the, the guys. But I realised quite quickly that that she was um, able to drink a lot and still learn her lines. Um, but I wasn't. Um, <laughs> and uh, I was, yeah, I was really struggling. Um, but luckily, they put me with Ben. Um, so we had suddenly a lot of scenes together. And uh, Ben was lovely because, you know, actors don't really ask for help or offer each other help as... We all know, but I was going, Ben, what do I do here? <laughs> Say this. So, you know, I learned so much, you know, from, from Benny, because he was saying, look, you're, you're fine. I was so nervous. He said, look, you're, you're fine in rehearsals. In fact, you're really good in rehearsals. Just relax. Just imagine this isn't going out on air, you know, and don't worry about the marks. All this stuff, he gave me so many bits of advice. So um, I just buckled down. I got in trouble once as well. I got called into Joe Hallows' office. She was the producer at the time. And sort of gently, sort of um, nudged away from Davinia. Look, just just be careful. I'm going to put you with with Ben, and just maybe just stay in in the week, you know, and uh, and try and be a bit more professional again. Because you're on a ten week contract. We'd like to give you a longer one, but you're now on a ten week contract. Oh my so, gosh! Do you remember, Jim? Are you are you allowed to say, Jimmy, about, about what happened? Because <laughs> it was one of those ones about your elbow. Oh, yeah. I was, I, mean, I was so keen to sort of fit in and sort of show that I was one of the lads. And this is nothing to me, you know. I'm definitely, this is definitely my tribe. I'm definitely an actor, you know, when I clearly wasn't. And I was sort of um, walking around the building, sort of hyperactive, just trying to make, make friends. And I walked into um, the main hall there. And Jimmy Mulhern, who's a very funny, he was head of sound, wasn't he? And a very funny guy. And he and his mates were um, jumping off um, a big sort of pile of props onto like a lighting rig um, or trying to and then sort of swing out and then land on this um, sort of crash mat thing and they, they couldn't quite do it and I was tall I went oh, hey hey guys I'm I'm really fun <laughs> that's easy for me I can do that so I jumped up grabbed it really chuffed and it was so hot and so dusty I sort of went, ah! so I sort of swung out of that angle and then let go and missed the mat landed on my elbow um, and then uh, luckily I'd, I'd finished for the day, I think. And I, I sort of went out going, Oh my God. Oh my God. That I went off to, um, see uh, Davinia and she said, don't worry, babe, I'll take you to the hospital. Right. We went to the hospital near her place in Ormskirk. Right. And then I came back in the next day with, with, with sort of, sort of a sling and she told everyone that we'd done it in bed. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I didn't know that bit. Yeah. Oh my God. But, but what happened was it because because he was like Benny Benny my, my, I, I'm honestly I'm in so much pain and he used to do this thing you probably remember Kelly you've, you've, you've been a scene with him and suddenly like sort of yeah stretch stretch, stretch, stretch and oh, twist yeah. And, yeah. and it was, like, there were two things that James did right there was that there was that yeah. and he'd be like doing that, this right the other thing was because like James found it very um like when you when you're learning lines like you know everyone has different ways of doing it. Uh, my way is, is basically I w write what each thought is all the way through and it's pretty obsessive and it's in it kind of like it means that when I walk onto set I feel kind of comfortable I feel that that even though that whatever happens that I've done my best and I've put in the most amount of work I can do um you know I walk onto set and there might be like much better actors than me or much more confident actors much more established actors but I think you know what? I've got that grounding so I'm all right rather than walk on and just think I, I only know what the shape of the words I don't know what they mean but um, what James uh, and that relaxes me. But what James does is he writes down <laughs> obsessively um, football teams, Liverpool football teams throughout the ages. Genuinely, you could probably tell what the FA Cup winning squad of like 1956 was or something. And um, and or, or greatest. What was that? 
65. 65. There we are. And the, but the, but the, <clears throat> you go, right, do you want to run this email? And turn it over. And on the back, it'd be like a million different names. I mean, these people that, you know, they're sort of pre-television names, you know, pre, like, there was no record of these people. It was sort of written in quill, you know, the, the, the <laughs> fact they existed at all, and you know, a doomsday book kind of players. And it's just like, who are these people? Oh, they're from the... Uh, yeah, 1932 squad. Um, yeah, they played uh, Barnsley and lost 4-0. Uh, you know, and they're like, what? The, what? And that's how you, that's what I really remember as well. Just all your scripts were just absolutely covered in, in... I think nerves. I think that was just a way of sort of calming myself down a bit. I, also, I mean, this is something that we could mention that's quite interesting to any actors that, and perhaps everyone does this, but I didn't know this, but Benny, I think Kerry as well, um, Taylor, both, both said, look, it's quite hard because we shoot out of sequence a lot. You might have 10 scripts in your file and you'd be doing a scene and you've, you know, you've got a line like, um, hello, mate, and then you walk off and you might play it and then go, oh, my God, hold a minute. The episode before this where we haven't we haven't been shot that yet, he punched me in the face. So it sh I should have played it differently. I, sh I, I should have said, hello, mate, mm. and walked off. So Ben said, look, you've got to, when you get your script, you know, the week before, whatever, or three days before, whatever it was. Three minutes before. But yeah. <laughs> the scene numbers down and the locations down who else is in the scenes with you and then a quick synopsis of what happens in each scene then tick them off you know because then you can go back through your file and that really helped me so on the front of the um, script i promise was that <laughs> on the back it was all the calm down calm down just just write this stuff down you know all these names are good footballers they all help me through my name <laughs> the spirit of good football what's your line learning secrets kelly you got any tips um, I, I've got like a photographic memory, so my short term memory is cracking. Oh, oh, I know, I'm sorry. My short no, but <clears throat> my short term memory is cracking. My long term memory is terrible, like yeah. really bad. Like I can have conversations with friends and they go, "Remember that time?" And I'm like, "Was I there?" And they're like, "Yeah, it was really? your birthday." And I yeah. just so I think that's the price that I pay. You know, but I think it's really nice that we that you guys have this kind of relationship, and it really feels like Ben looked after you, and there's always been a bit of um. <laughs> A bromance between you two yeah. and i've got um a lovely little clip to show you both that oh. i think absolutely shows that bromance to its best ability can we show the clip please Sir. Sir. And can we show the clip please <laughs> nope we're just seeing us there oh. we go this will be put properly in the edit oh, God. Uh, <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> we don't have sound. Come on, mate. Let's try. Oh, no, I do you know what? I remember this. I remember this. But is the crew as well laughing their heads off? Oh my God, Jimmy! Jimmy, because what happened was that with that, it was like we. It was, it was. Oh, there's more. There's yeah. more. There's a few more takes. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> I haven't got sound. Have you got sound? No. no. Okay. Come on, mate. We've got to get up. It's my big day today, isn't it? Right. <laughs> nope. I like this one because there's a little <laughs> smirk there. <laughs> like Lewis was just enjoying it that little bit too much. Steve, <laughs> 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 <Dave>, Alistair, yeah. <laughs> My God. Action. <laughs> uh, do you know, it's just such a laugh, man. It was the whole thing. It was just, it was such a, oh, God. <laughs> you get another one. Oh. <laughs> what was great was that we had funny scripts, but also they didn't mind us kind of <coughs> ad, ad libbing a bit and changing the odd bit and, um, <laughs> You know, creating stuff on set. Which... Um, do you know, the thing is about that, I remember that. I remember that so well. And it, it wasn't it like Finn Stag do or something? It was yeah, something, something like, about, and, yeah, you've got to get was, off, you've got an important day or something. Yeah, and it, but it was the thing is, is that like, that, I, I mean, maybe it's the wrong thing to say, but it was like, I can't, I forgot that what we were doing, anybody else saw it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it, it was sort of, it became just like, just having the best best time with your yeah. closest friends you know and that we're all all of us were plucked out of like you know wherever we came from and suddenly thrown into this environment and and um and told to get on with it there was no i mean 
you just you either kind of you sank or swam really and and everybody helps at the time i don't know what it's like now but the, the cast a lot bigger but everyone just looked out for each other because we'd all been through it or, or you know when, when somebody new turned up you kind of took them under the under your wing and and helped them as you were helped and and um yeah it was just it was such a laugh my god some of the, do you remember there was a <laughs> i remember as well there's, there's one scene it's not in that outtakes but we decided we'd start there they, they, james and i digging a hole in his <laughs> in finn's yard which is i don't know what it is that's like the the back of the club yeah we're digging away and and they said oh just uh, basically we, we like you know look up and you see um <laughs> what's the name oh eve. god eve oh my god see eve cup that like, coming towards you okay and you sort of look up and sort of okay, stop. Kelly's mum. yeah pl- yeah that's oh, it wow. yeah yeah, yeah. And, and the thing was that they were trying to work out a way that they would go, they would cut from two lads digging a hole <laughs> illegally in Finn's yard to suddenly having a very irate mother coming towards them, you know, what are you doing? What's going on? And so they decided that what they do is go for like a whip pan and then we needed a way to get across. So like James and I came up with this great idea that basically like him with a, sp- a spade, I would pick up whatever stone we came to came to hand and like I put a pretty substantial one, throw it in the air and James would go tong and crack it one right and and of course you know he'd hit it wherever he hit it and the the force of James doing that they'd whip over to see Eve then walking towards us going what's going on what's the big idea anyway on the tape they bought like we threw it in the air James said crack and this stone probably burst sides of a fist missed eve's head by about <gasps> the she, like, she didn't notice she did didn't she know oh no. because she, oh. she was thinking what am i going to say or you know those yeah. boys and her eyes were just she came right around the corner didn't she and it, yeah. oh, oh it just <laughs> missed her head <laughs> oh my god Could have but i wrecked I reckon if you two have been there as long as you have, you've definitely got the juiciest gossip. So we got some gossip last week from Gemma and Alex, but you guys have got to have more gossip than that. Because at one point there was um, a girl's house and a boy's house, wasn't there? So like actually for the actors. So you'd finish filming on set and the girls would go back to the girl's house and all live together and the boys would go back to the boy's house. Yeah. You've got to have gossip. I mean, we've got loads. I mean, you know, I've just finished a tour with Gary Lucy. Um, who I was saying to you before, wasn't I, in um, in our text conversation, um, is still partying like it's 1999, Gary. <laughs> um, and he's, he's great. I love him to bits. Um, he was probably the most prolific, uh, shall, shall we say, romantically within the cast. Um, but his... Not within the cast. That makes it sound like he was going through the cast. That's well, what I'm saying. It went through me. Like a knife through butter. <laughs> and... Um, but, um, but yeah, yeah. He, I mean, you know, yeah, his, he, he, his, his character's bed was slept in, wasn't it, by a, a couple on the show? Do you remember that? No. Yeah, a couple on the no. show were caught <sighs> mid intercourse. Floor in the deck, like jo- while we were filming, like yeah, just like, in between just... scenes. Yeah, they weren't filming yeah. on the set. Ob- obviously, that would be a different kind of show. <laughs> Hollyoaks much later. It was. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. See, I, I think I... I see, I think if I, it's I, people that I'm thinking, then I would go, definitely he would, yeah. But then I'd go, really, would she? But it wasn't Gary. No, it wasn't Gary. <laughs> That's the funny thing. It was, well, so he's going to do scenes in his Luke's bedroom yeah. knowing that another cast member had with... But we all assumed, you know, oh, God, Gary's in huge trouble. He's been... Oh, it wasn't him What in Luke's bed. He played... It wasn't even him. <laughs> God, you know, I know, I know who that was. That yeah. whole, they were, yeah, they were quite uh, an interesting couple, weren't they? They were like at it everywhere. I yes. knew who it was now, and it's not the first people that I was thinking of. No, yes. no. Yeah, I got it. No, 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 God. <laughs> but I mean, what's funny is that Alex, uh, Jim, I don't know whether you saw, but uh, Alex uh, mentioned about what was, he brought up was one of my favourite stories from, from the time at Hollyoaks which was the um, the Soap Awards and where Bernie, <laughs> like, uh, I, I'm, yeah. I mean, it'd be great to have a chat with him to get his side of the story. Oh, no, he's, he... he's cool. We, we put a promo out for last week's show with right. Alex saying that Bernie had dropped his pants at the Soap Awards and Bernie well, was no, like, that's, yeah, brilliant. But, that, but that's not entirely true. So did, oh. I don't know, because I haven't seen, I only saw cl- the clip of, did Alex go through the detail of what actually happened? No. Right. So what happened was that it was post, because 
for those that don't know, like it's it's Sit kind back, of relax, get your yeah, drink. Yeah. <laughs> but Bernie Latham, just a brilliant actor and a, lo- a truly lovely man, a guy that literally like would do anything for you. And like you know, as I said earlier on, the, the Hollywood people take you under, under the wing. Bernie was one of them. He was the nicest guy and and still is, right? So this is totally. <laughs> unexpected and, of, and he played mr cunningham yeah played mr yeah, cunningham yeah. so so we had like a bit you know it was, was just he was a lovely lovely actor right, big right, bit. Beard. all right all right james yeah. yeah but just honestly couldn't do enough for it anyway we'd all believe it or not had a bit of a drink after the soap awards now what the soap the soap awards is like as soon as he went thank you good night that is like a starting pistol for the hollyoaks lot the hollyoaks 100 to sprint from the studio <laughs> to get to the free bar to start neck and all this stuff so everyone's now at the bar just drinking and drinking and drinking and of course like um what they want what they wanted in this particular time was to get people mingling and around the room generally because they were filming it from different points around you know um what was going on and anyway they had these two uh like go-go dancers in bikinis standing there kind of giving it all on, on, on a podium sort of like trying to get trying to get people to dance rather than stand at the bar and go 15 jet donors are going please no they're all for me and um and so you're know, trying to get people out and dancing and whatnot so anyway <clears throat> everyone's had a drink okay and i this, this dance it's dance there people come up and dance and i'm like no i'm not too shy you know, come up and dance no bernie goes right i'll get the get the crowd going it comes up and starts dancing she's like ah come on up come on up he's like right and get up on the podium <laughs> so he's now on the podium in front of all these people and everyone goes way oh yeah nice one. Oh, he's lovely in a minute oh he's a lovely nice actor yeah lovely guy and he's there dancing away and she's like giving him all that and he's there in his suit and stuff like that and he goes oh i'm into this i'll take my jacket off at which point everybody goes yeah <laughs> brilliant oh fantastic oh it's great but bernie who's like an incredible comedian as well he just turns around he's just you know you can see he's into it now so he goes all right take off my tie as well and sort of swings <laughs> out, chucks it into the crowd and says, yeah then he kicks off his bloody shoe and a shoe goes ping and another one ping and everyone goes yeah going nuts oh my god it's amazing and i'm there sort of chatting away to someone i'm thinking all right okay this is going to chill because this is burning and it'll be cool about it anyway next thing he goes out comes the belt swings it around his head chucks it into the crowd the crowd oh, yeah nuts. and then what he did was he then it was the finale the grand finale because he's got nothing else he's got no top on now no shirt nothing <laughs> right he's kicked off his shoes he's just in his trousers in, With the in front there, of on the podium on the podium in front of every single member from every single soap in the whole country and the press and the press and 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 also all the producers and stuff like that as well and it's being filmed right so it's there there, right and at those in those soap awards you were allowed to bring a guest with you and he brought a mate with him as like a non-actor but he was there getting stuck in the bar and he what he did was he he (laughs) His grand finale was to drop his trousers, stand there in his wife runs and go, ta-da, and then pick him up and, and jump off. And what he did, he d- dropped his trousers and stood up. And as he dropped his trousers, his mate leapt up, grabbed the <gasps> back of his pants. Really? Oh, his pants down. So he then went, ta-da. <laughs> <laughs> in front of everyone. And it was just like, I, yeah, I, was, I just remember turning around, just was like, burn <laughs> And, he, and, then, and then he leapt off this podium because he was like, oh, God, you know, <laughs> trying to pull up his mouth. He leapt off. Career. He, he hit the floor right, with bare feet on a like a lager covered floor, skidded over, whacked his head on a speaker, and oh, half dogged yeah. himself out. And then and then got sort of like taken home. And it was it was you know pretty worse for wear. Woke up in the middle of the night, dying for the loo. Woke up, sat bolt upright. The pillow was stuck to his head with the <laughs> blood. And then he was like, "Oh, I need to go to the toilet." And got out. And at that point, he realised he'd fractured both feet. <laughs> no. Yeah. True story. Do you remember also, Ben, that the following Monday, because I wasn't there that year. I wasn't what? there. That, I wasn't there. That so I think I must have been filming the next day or something, but I wasn't there. I wasn't in the room at that point. Anyway, I didn't know about it because I lived with him. I didn't know about it. Yeah. He, I think he was first up and um, he was running late on the Monday morning. He came in to uh, the studios and there was no parking spaces anywhere. So, okay, well, uh, quick, 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 quick. They're, they're calling me quick, quick. So he parked on that bit of sort of lawn just opposite Phil's office. <laughs> and as he was stepping out of the car, he noticed Phil at the window doing this. 
He's like, oh shit! So he got <laughs> back in the car. Sorry, sorry, and did this big, massive wheel skid by accident and ruined the whole turf. Oh my god! <laughs> and, and you know but the, the thing about it as well. I was I did a play like years later with Steve Pinder from off of Brookside. Yeah. And he said that he was doing something like the weakest link or something like that. And and he was he was chatting to one of the crew. He said, um, do you know, uh, doing his microphone or something. He just said, uh, I did. Um, I was actually working on the the Soap Awards um, years ago. We met before. And he was like, oh, lovely to meet you. He went, yeah, you know that guy from Hollyoaks. <laughs> you, you know, you know the tape still exists, don't you? No. And he was like, no. But yeah, apparently. It's st- I mean, I don't. I've never seen it. But I don't know, but it's, apparently it still exists. But yeah. Well, we have to start a campaign to get that tape. <laughs> get so if that anybody tape. out there, Mike's nodding his head, anybody out there that's got the tape, I'm sure Bernie won't mind us showing it. Oh, my God. Do you know the Imagine. thing is, is that I've known, I mean, that story for me, that is one of my favourite Hollyoaks stories. Yeah. And it was so unlike Bernie as well. He's not that kind of guy. He wouldn't, you know, he wouldn't have thought, oh, I know what's a really good idea, showing everybody my willy. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't ever occur to him, but... It was just, oh, it couldn't have happened to a nicer man. (laughs) (laughs) Bless him. Oh, God. Madness. eh? So you both um, worked a lot as actors after you left the show as well, because I was kind of doing a bit of research, and you both got like a huge body of work that you kind of went on to. I've now just got a huge body. So, uh, <laughs> swings and roundabouts. Yeah. Neither of which I've been on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like the fact that you sound really surprised about that, Kelly, as well. <laughs> yeah, you, you guys worked afterwards as well. I mean, like... I, I, did, I, did, I did not see that coming <laughs> no but I meant in the I knew you'd both done stuff but I didn't realize until I kind of had a google how much you'd actually done I mean yeah well you do you do a lot if you work for free I mean it's uh you know <laughs> no I mean we both like Jim went on and did like you did like what six years was it in casualty seven well, you years did- you did Mile High first, didn't you, James? Yeah, I loved that, yeah. Do you know what? I watched that, and I loved watching that. I just thought it was brilliant fun. It was great fun, yeah. Reza Maradi, who was one of our um, best directors at Hollyoaks, you'll remember, he went yeah. off and produced that, and he directed the first episode, and he got me in. Um, uh, and Adam Sinclair and Sarah Manners, who'd both been in uh, Moving On, the first late-night Hollyoaks series. Oh. So, um, yeah. Um, and yeah, it was just great fun, and it was kind of ahead of its time when I watched it I thought god this is cut so quickly you know each scene was so short mm. and really edited so quickly but then looking back that's kind of how tv is is now you know the, with, with the attention spans and it was it was very well received I think um, we were sort of surprised at how how well it because it, it was good fun and we really enjoyed it and the scripts were good and we were all putting in a good shift and all that but it went I think it was the biggest show on sky uh, apart from the simpsons so we'd done really wow. well you know oh, and god like, and from that, I got casualty, as did uh, Sarah Manners. Both went off to do that straight after that. So, so we couldn't do the second series because we were both offered casualty. And how long were you on casualty for, James? Just under six years, yeah, oh. which was great fun. But I, again, it was another sort of step where, you know, I was suddenly nervous again because I'd been in two jobs where you could make a mistake and everyone was kind of your, your age and um and it was fun and don't don't worry just go go for it ad lib all that to a show that i'd watched as a teenager in bristol because it shot in bristol it was uh and i'm walking on to you know i think my my second scene was with charlie you know and i'm walking on just saying lines to oh my god that is charlie i'm on the set in casualty and i was so (laughs) nervous and i realized that one take is the average you know two takes everyone starts going doing two takes like that and there's no ad, no ad libbing because it's all medical stuff you can't say yeah it's it's this one no it isn't that one it's this one. <laughs> it's upside down if you do it like that you will kill <laughs> yeah. so it was i mean i was so nervous but um and it was a very different sit- situation because i mean i've mentioned this to, to ben ben uh, before but um you know we didn't get much direction really you know because at hollyoaks i think everyone there was kind of um in their first or second job in that position, you know, so that, so the uh, directors were perhaps coming from their first directing job else, elsewhere or had been first ADs somewhere before or even there. Um, so everyone was kind of learning together and you got a lot of direction too because they were our age. We were all quite young. 
most of us were straight out of stage school or drama school, so they didn't mind giving us a lot of notes. Cut, James, that was terrible. Do it better. Action. You know, whereas casually, you couldn't say that to these big stars, you know, who've been on the show for 20 years and done um, movies. Oh, just to interrupt, Jim, Jim uh, we, we talked about, you know, I talked about this the other day, but Kelly, I don't know whether you remember, it might have been before your time, but for, for, for a little while, because... People, I think the, the script writers were getting and producers were getting a little bit frustrated with the fact that we weren't maybe doing it how they wanted it to be done. They were put, they were put something like Kelly walks into the scene angry brackets three. Oh really? Did they do that? I've heard yeah, that they did. Yeah. Did they but, do that on Brookside scripts? Nine. I think. Did they do that on Brookside scripts? I think that's what I heard they did. Uh, I maybe I've gotten confused. Maybe it was the Hollyoaks one. Uh, I'd be surprised if it was the Brookside lot because they were obviously like older and a lot of them. Yeah. Been around. Ages, but but yeah, they did it for a while where they literally just you know they would tell you in numbers <gasps> up ten how you would do, and I cause you know I'd be I'd do a scene and and um, and be like, what do you reckon, guys? With that a six, I mean <laughs> five, I could do six. I've got a six in me. And be like, <laughs> yeah, but um, but yeah, so it must have been. I, I what's funny as well is I I went in and did a guest episode um on on Casualty, and uh and what was nice about it for me was walking onto set and Jim doing exactly what he said that I did for him at, at Hollyoaks. Basically, right, Benny, here you go. That's where you get changed. The loo's over there. Just go in that one, not in that one. And um, and the food's over there. We all eat at this time. There's a really nice canteen around the corner as well. So, you know, and just to, what when the worst thing about doing a sh- acting generally is you is the nerves is the, and that's what kind of destroys me is getting so get so wound up it's got to work oh god if i cock this up you know i'll never work again oh you know i need this job to feed at least one of my children and um you know and all those sorts of things and uh but it's like it's great to walk on when you've got like a friendly face who can just you know put his arm around you and just lead you around the, around the way and that made me feel so much better i still did a terrible performance but it made me feel yeah, good well, you were great and, you know um i remember not sure if you remember this, but because um, you were playing a squaddy, weren't you? You were playing a yeah. squaddy uh, who was what he was a uh, was he uh, he was training two two younger guys. Yeah. Yeah. David, David, and David Gaezi was one of the guys. Yeah, and, uh, David is now a Hollywood star. I mean, and yeah. what's funny with I bumped into I live out in the, down the country. I bumped into David at like <laughs> having some dinner. So I was like, hey mate, where, how come? And he went, boy, I live just like five minutes away. So wow. we've hooked up since then, and yeah. Uh, yeah, but you have these quite sort of hard hitting scenes where you were quite physical with him and sort of, sort of bullying him and sort of, you know, breaking him down men, uh, mentally and stuff. And there's a, a scene in reception at Casualty where you were making him say, look, you fell over, mm. you ran into a door, all this stuff, whatever. And he was going, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were really quite brutal with him at that. Yeah. I had a line which was just to walk in and hear this commotion and go, hey, guys, come on, keep it down. Keep it down, mate. You know, like that. But they let me do it. Hey. <laughs> and they kept it in do you remember yeah wow. yeah oh my god it, but mate but what was lovely as well was like that you because it's that thing as well seeing people that know everybody and and uh yeah it was nice man it was being part of that family thing that's that for me was always the best thing about about acting and, and i'm you know i still um wake up uh you know for ha- having had holly extremes where i've you know been in an environment where i've just been confident and chatting and f- laughing and you know sometimes filming but it's uh <laughs> you know it's just that sort of thing and, and for me like even though i've done as you said kelly lots of other bits and bobs like none of them kind of even come close to that kind of camaraderie and friendship you know yeah, and like, like Jim and we're, we're, like, we're all friends, aren't we? Like, and how many? What, Eighty years later, we've done done well, you know. And Kelly's aged very well. Jim, not so much. <laughs> 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 James, you've got a, a show that's on at the moment, haven't you? Yeah, well, I mean, I've got a couple of scenes in it. It's uh, it's great actually. You know, it's called uh, We Hunt Together, and um, the BBC's uh, it's called We Hunt, Hunt. Oh. We Hunt <laughs> Together. Yeah. Uh, I need to delete uh, my browser history, mate. I'm sorry. That's, uh... <laughs> U- UK Gold have sort of branched off into different, I think they've split up into different channels and their BBC's crime content is uh, is now on Alibi TV, which is way up the dial past the porn channels. Mm. 
But um, you nodded yeah. then, Ben. Oh well, yeah, 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 past the yeah. porn channels, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, Ben's, <laughs> Ben's actually completed Pornhub during lo- lockdown. That's his uh, <laughs> main achievement. Um, but yeah, so that's that's on my. I've got an episode on tonight actually where I've got a scene. Um, it's a really good cast. Eve Eve Miles is in it, who you, you might know from Torchwood and Keeping Faith. Um, lots of great actors in it, and it's really good. It's a sort of dark, gritty crime drama i'm only in a, as i say a um, couple of episodes but um that's on tonight at 10 o'clock so yeah looking forward to we're well, hoping i don't, haven't been cut from the episode that's the uh i got uh, shot by, by a pigeon today so that's usually good luck isn't it yeah so you <laughs> think should should be in there because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that, that makes sense yeah, <laughs> and you do a, a lot of stand-up don't you so i did a, a bit more googling and watched some of your stand-up oh, oh, did you yeah i did ben he's he's quite funny you know he, well he's he's gone from just smelling funny to actually being <laughs> funny. so no you, it's very funny yeah, you used a lot of, of the clip that I saw. You were using a lot of your acting, so you were kind of talking about your friend, and you were kind of doing yeah, your West Country yeah, accent. And, yes, it was. Yeah, yeah. It's quite old that one because I haven't have put many clips up actually. Uh, that's quite an old one, but um, yeah, I just loved it. I mean, I've just always been a big fan of of stand up, and then um, I fancied a break from acting, so I went and did a course that someone recommended, um, uh, just learning how to do stand up and it's not just writing and performing it's sort of stagecraft confidence you know different ways of approaching a joke and all that and i loved it and um i entered a competition for uh beginners and uh, did quite well and then got an agent i was like fuck i've got an agent uh okay and then he just started giving me work and i was going well i'm getting paid to do this now okay and i thought well i'm, I'm lucky that you know i've got friends of mine who are you know in between acting jobs and laboring or, you know, doing office work, temping, whatever, um, and hating it. Um, but I'm doing this. I thought, well, at least I'm on stage, you know, and I go into auditions thinking, well, I've performed four nights this week in front of stag do's and hen do's at jongler's leads. This is not <laughs> scary for me, you know, no. not as rusty as perhaps other people are, you know, so it you're really- also really good, mate. I mean, it's one of those things, Kelly, that like I saw, Jim, when he'd just done his course and then he was doing, there's a, there's a whole, I mean, I didn't know anything about this, but you start off, there's a, there's a whole, when you see some people doing their bit at, live at the Palladium or whatever, they've gone through a whole, like a training ground to get there. And it's not like they've, they've got like half, half, you know, they don't start off with a half hour and good show. I mean, like if you have like five minutes and if you, if your five minutes is good and solid, then they give you a bit more and like, you know, I remember Jim. It's like you know, you're brilliant. You've, you've always been brilliant, but it was one of those ones seeing you in this other sort of situation. You know, you're naturally funny and you're naturally very good. One of the, one of the other things you do really well, and it's a real, you know, it's, it's very difficult to do, is James is really good at being like the MC, which I think is arguably the hardest job. Because rather than coming and go, you know, it's a bit like a singer kind of going, I've got five songs, I'm going to sing them, F off. You know, it's, it's, uh, and I'll adjust it for the crowd and then do it. To, to have an MC who's standing there kind of like coming in, got to keep everybody on board. If the, if, the, if that last act bombed, he doesn't want everybody to just go leaving or go into the bar, wants them to stay and spend the money like in a minute and, and watch this next act. And it's, it's like, corralling people in and there's a real skill i had no idea and it's um and uh, yeah james is i think really a natural comedian and a natural mc it's really good it's really something to watch as well it's good i actually met mike mike on, on the circuit too actually a, a, a few years ago because mike was doing stand-up at the time as well can people see mike we can we can we can, hey, always, we can always cut this bit oh get him on hi mike hi mike i've turned my camera on there you go. Oh, we can see Mike see now. Yeah, I've, there he's, he let him, he's let himself just in case. Yeah, there he is. Look at him. Jambo's let himself go, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very different skill, isn't it, Mike? You know, it's yeah. the Mike act, act as well. Because obviously, you know, we were taught, weren't we? We we three to never notice the camera, never reference it. You know. Whatever, and then I went into um, presenting, which is all down the lens, you know, and yet you're reading a script from from just to the right of the lens or whatever. Uh, and then stand up, you've got to look at the audience, so you're not looking down a lens, you're looking at people in the crowd, you know, especially mm-hmm. as an MC. So it's different. It's kind of the same skill set, you know. You're still on stage and using those skills, but you're kind of having to address the audience, you know, which is, you know, it's more uh, more so than pan, um, panto, you know. So you really. I know it isn't. 
Oh, no. Where's my career? Yeah. <laughs> Out of the three of them, James, which do you prefer? Is it the acting or the stand up or the presenting, or is it just a mix of everything? I genuinely love all of them. I mean, I haven't done much presenting um, since I had a TV job doing it and uh, and got fired. But, um, but yeah, I, I presented a lot of um, charity dues and, you know, um, award ceremonies and stuff. So that's kind of off an auto cue and often down a lens as well as being in a live environment. But whatever I'm doing, I kind of miss the other things. So if I'm not, if I'm doing, you know, four or five gigs a week all over the country stand up, I haven't done an audition for three or four weeks, I really miss it, you know, and vice versa. If I'm doing a few months on a TV show, which doesn't happen as often now, but I would, I would like it to, but um, then I start sort of craving the stand up. And also, I, I'm not sure if, if you're the same, but when I'm on holiday, just two weeks away, just, you know, sitting on a beach in Jamaica having great food and drinks and stuff with, with my girlfriend, I am also thinking, I'm not getting enough attention. I'm not getting enough laughs and <laughs> laughs. I'll be on, on stage. I want to hear, you know, 500 people going, yeah, great, it was really funny. And then you sort of feel this sort of wave of, of love, more so than you get with telly, where, you know, you, you might, might do a comedy scene and no one's allowed to laugh. You know, the extras aren't allowed to laugh. The, the crew aren't, you know. Often they, they they would and they'd ruin the take, you know. <laughs> oh my God, just, just, just on that, on that, sorry to interrupt. Another another thing that always that made me laugh, you know, because, I mean, I left Hollyoaks. Holly, I mean, it was still in black and white when I left it, but it was like it was... <laughs> It was one of those ones where we went out and um, do you remember Kelly? There was at that time when um, it was called Boys Do Barca, and or like a half load of the load of the fellows went off to Barcelona. Yes. Time? Yes. And we were flying back and forth, filming like one Finn, season in Finn Liverpool. Finn Stagg, wasn't it? Finn Stagg, yeah. yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> so we were out there um, in this club. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. This, we are out there in this club in in Barcelona, and of course you got all the brilliant brilliant production people um that is many of whom are still at Hollyoaks. there's a lovely lady called colette greenwood who's um absolutely amazing still there and there's like you know, she's very high up at, at Hollyoaks now and she was uh, at the time was she either producing or she was on set with us and um anyway so we we're doing this club full of uh, and it, the, the club is full of all these um uh, uh, extras and stuff, or uh, Spanish extras. Is, that, is it Spain, Barcelona, or is it Barcelona, yeah, Catalonian, yeah. Catalonia, whatever? For the, the Spanish um, extras, I say. But anyway, and many of them couldn't speak very much English. Anyway, so everyone's talking away, and it was getting a bit fraught, and uh, and kind of the first sort of said, um, yeah, quiet, "Quiet, please, quiet, please, quiet, please." Ah, oh, look awesome. at that! That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Oh, you'll have to send us that, and we'll put it up properly. Brilliant, yeah. And it was, it was saying, you know, quiet, please. Can we have some quiet, please? Um, quiet, please. And all these extras are still sort of chatting away and, and whatever. <laughs> and then, and then, um, this girl came sort of walking past with with like quite large chested girl. At which point, you know, everyone's sort of being going, getting all quiet, and being sort of quieting down. At which point, James goes <laughs> like that, right, like that. At which point, everyone just pisses themselves laughing and everyone's going quiet please quiet please quiet please and Jerry sort of lets it die down a bit let's die down a bit and then goes <laughs> and, just everyone starts off, and then goes and then goes <laughs> anyway, and everyone's just falling apart absolutely and all of us is just like losing it because it's late night we're in, we're in Barcelona <laughs> And anyway, Claire Greenwood just turns around. And remember, she's going, quiet, quiet, and really losing her temper. And she turns around to the translator and said, how do you say quiet in Spanish? <laughs> and and it's about this, this good, she went, uh, silencio, por favor. She went, silencio, por favor. Silencio, proper brilliant Liverpool lady. Silencio, por favor. She went, ay, silencio. I want to say silencio. I mean silencio. <laughs> and, oh, God, it was just brilliant absolutely bonkers but yeah oh god crazy times but yeah it was fun it was really I, fun. I remember i was quite sort of surprised because that was i didn't mean for her to hear that because that's quite offensive luckily <laughs> she did laugh but i meant that for you uh, oh, right. and nick and whoever else was there paulie yeah. and gary whoever else but because that is you know a non-verbal joke all yeah. the spanish extras laughed as well oh my like, god oh, 
<laughs> and then I was oh shit, I'm in trouble now. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't resist going again. As soon as the laugh died down, <laughs> just doing it again. And it, <laughs> it was just all laughing. It was just it was yeah, it was one of those pure gags that just yeah, that no language needed. It was just and everyone everyone lost it. And everyone I mean, God, that whole trip was just crazy, man, wasn't it? <sighs> James, you're known for being a bit of a joker. And um, Gemma Atkinson was on the show last week and she sent a message in to say, ask, J- ask James if he remembers. And then she says, I've got to say this bit in a really posh voice. Can I have some quiet, please? I'm trying to read. Do you remember that? Christ, I don't, you know. So she says, yeah, basically, on. Joe Hallows came into the green room to oh, give us God, all a talk. Do. Go on. Go on. <laughs> and to tell us all off. I don't know what we'd done that we were being told off. And then um, over her, he said, looking up from his book, obviously taking the piss, and it didn't go down well with Joe, but he used to say it all the time after that. So apparently she came into the green room to tell us all off and you um told us to show up, basically. <laughs> the boss of the company, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, God. Being quiet while she's giving like a cast bollocking. Yeah, <laughs> that was funny. That there was, was quite a few of those cast bollockings. There was. And I remember... If you were late, you got fined. That yeah. that became a thing because people were. You look. What was that face, Ben? I just remember D. <laughs> remember D. Yeah, Davinia. Oh God. Yeah, D got D got um, Davinia got. Um, uh, yeah, she she was. She rep- that's when the fi- that's when the fining thing was brought in. Oh, was it? Yeah, yeah. And she was. She, I mean, I, you know, the thing is with Davinia, she was just like she was just you know a, an astonishingly good natural actress she was just yeah. one of the people that just you yeah she could have gone on if she wanted to and done anything she's brilliant absolutely brilliant and just charming could turn up as james said you know probably feeling a bit rough from the night before you'd never know it she always looked knockout and still does yeah. you know couldn't keep and your then, eyes on what it was one of those things where you know you see when a footballer gets gets fined for doing something naughty and you go well yeah but he's not a, he's not in the first team you know, let's see if Ronaldo does that, if, if he yeah. gets, you know, and Davinia got away with a lot because, you know, she would be out the latest. She, she would be doing naughty stuff, whatever. But then she'd, she'd come in and um, perhaps she wouldn't have learned her lines, but she'd get through through the scene. You think, wow, that was good. And then you watch the episode and she you just couldn't keep your eyes off her. She was wow. so good. She's amazing. She really amazing. Because, because she'd be like, well, why am I going to train for the, for, for the World Cup? What's the point? I don't mm. need to. Look, I just scored four goals. She was that good that you. It was hard for them to sort of bring those fines in. Yeah, but, but I wasn't there when she was there, but I remember because I watched the show before I came on it, and I was a huge fan. And um, I remember watching her and thinking that she was just really exciting to watch, yeah. actually. Yeah. Because <laughs> but she was, she was like that to work with those. She was exciting to work with. I mean, I the irony of it was, was that I played her boyfriend, and it was kind of like yeah, she's she kind of. <laughs> Well, <laughs> you didn't. Uh, anyway, we're, 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 maybe we should leave that whoa, there. Whoa, whoa, whoa! We're not leaving anything. Where pick that but back up what, and tell me all about was, it. What was what was funny was that like was when I think D in the end got let go for late lateness or something. I don't know. I can't even remember what happened now. But um, but, but did, she, <laughs> did she turn around and just sort of say, <laughs> "Say again, mate." She's been back on the show recently. Oh, uh, has she? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. But I think but it was either someone, anyway, whoever it was, got they got let go for being late, turned around and like slammed the door and then opened it up again and said, and another thing, you know, if you were going to fire me, you could have at least waited till lunchtime. <laughs> and I don't know if it was, was Davinio, I, I, or maybe she left under her own call, I can't remember. But oh, also somebody. somebody, yeah, it was somebody anyway. But yeah, God, it was mad. But yeah, that, all the fun, that whole finding thing, God, it was just... Yeah, you know, we were all young. We we're all living together. You know, we we're making this show. Mars, no, none of us were all in this little bubble in the middle of nowhere. What do they think was going to happen? <laughs> you know I mean? I've, got, I've got I've got a story for Gemma if she remembers this. Um, was this is crazy because Joe Hallows we've mentioned a few times is uh, was a the producer then. Fantastic um, as well, Joe. Brilliant. Yeah, she right, yeah, yeah. Joe a lot. She was a real. She was again. Sorry to just uh, interrupt you, but have to say that she was absolutely the beaten heart of the show her and phil she steered the ship phil came up with the ideas and absolutely like watched every every moment the show evolve and controlled it but joe as well those two together just amazing and she was she was fierce but she was also like fair and fun yeah and she did it all to do well yeah Mm -hmm. but she this 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 was a big mistake of of, of hers we used to um have a lot of pas didn't we you know where you'd go and you'd get paid a couple of grand 
to open a supermarket or a nightclub or, you know, and they were often in very far flung places, you know. I did one of those and that was with you. <laughs> yeah. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> I just remember signing someone's chest and thinking, this is strange. This is weird, isn't it? Yeah. And, um, yeah. I mean, they're, they're quite awkward, aren't they? I got a pint of piss poured on me once at uh, a nightclub in Crew. I don't blame them. But that was me. That was me again. That was with, one, that was with you. That was me and you. But, um, because you sort of get introduced at a nightclub and there's a big queue of girls asking for, you know, autographs as it, as it was back, back then. And then all, all the lads are on this sort of, you know, mezzanine above going fucking prick and that one of them poured a pint of piss and i thought is that piss it smells like piss and then the the, the plastic glass landed on my head like, yep that is definitely piss anyway oh. well alex has sent a message for you ben oh. yes so alex says um he you gave him a lot of advice when he first started and you oh. gave him some really specific advice that he says has been invaluable and he's used on a number of his occasions and nearly every job oh. basically it was to swear and ruin a take if you stumble rather than carry on so they don't use it or have a bad take of you mumbling. Ah, <laughs> and I stand by that. <laughs> I stand by that. See, yeah, the thing is about that. So hold on a minute, let's just recap. So this 16-year-old boy joins a yeah. show and an iconic yeah. member of the show says, yeah, mate, if you do something shit, just swear they can't use it then. Pretty much? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> thing is, thing is about it that is I can't. I mean, you know, yeah. <clears throat> the I, I think the thing is about it is that sometimes you know you can do stuff and you get through it and you just think, do you know what? That was rubbish. That was absolutely rubbish. But they've what would happen was that like you you knew you had a certain number of takes. You can't just keep going. I mean, James is talking about the casualty earlier on and sort of you know get to take three and people are a bit like, you know. But it was it was one of those ones that time was always of the essence. But. There, there was an occasion where there, there when, when it felt a little bit like you hadn't done anywhere near your best it was nowhere near good enough but you know they were going to buy it because they got the track right then and then um the track is when they're pushing the camera and you know it's, they got the shot right basically it was one of those ones where you just think do you know what we could all probably do that better <laughs> why not just muck it up with a little sweary and um yeah yeah i think i you know because the, the problem is, is that like, unless you're, unless you're kind of a, like a superstar or, you know, on, a, on something that a film that just can roll on and on, you know, is that, is that you're going to, no one's ever going to say, do you want another one? Do you want to do it again? You know, but, but since I see what I do is like, I, I, I would always look for another take in somebody. I'd always go, well, we've got that one, that one's safe now. And, and, and I, I now I'm a videographer and make films and, and I do documentaries and stuff like that. But when I'm working with different people, I always just say, like, yeah, we've got that one. That one's great. Do you want to do another one? Well, you talk, always... about, you talk about making documentaries, but wasn't yeah. one of your documentaries, it was like award winning, wasn't it? Yeah. You, so you, like, you put it out there like it's just a bit of something. But actually, oh, it's, like awards it's phenomenal. Awards. <laughs> oh, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, no, I mean, pro previous to this award, um, to previous to the, the film, um, uh, it, which is called Extraordinary People, it's about this uh, lady who's a burn survivor um, who um, has been crippled by depression uh, through this terrible injury she sustained when she was like three. She fell into like a load of boiling water. Her mum had boiled like a, a, a boiled a load of uh, pans of water to fill up a bath and then sort of put the hot water in and then put the cold water in. There was only hot water in it and she was playing a game with her siblings, fell into the hot water and just like basically, she nearly died twice and it took all the skin off her back. She's like, bless, she's a lovely lady, Sylvia uh, Mack. And um, yeah, she now is a campaigner for people that have got all this hidden disfigurement, but she, she suffered with depression all life. Anyway, so she, I work a lot with this guy called Professor Greg White, who is brilliant two-time olympian he um is the trainer for all the people that do like sport relief you know when people go and little mix up kilimanjaro and it's like well greg <laughs> greg's the guy that's got them up there you know <laughs> he's and, dragged them up <laughs> he literally dragged them up yeah um or if um uh, he's very like dave dave Walliam, david williams swam the thames and well the guy that swam alongside him motivating him keeping him sane keeping him focused that was greg greg's an absolute legend he's a lovely guy and we've got a production company together so our first project <clears throat> that we made was this thing called Extraordinary People, the Burns Victim and the Bosphorus. And uh, the Bosphorus is um, this stretch, iconic stretch of uh, water between Turkey and Europe. And um, uh, and it's uh, every year about 3,000, 2,000 people rather jump off this boat and swim from Turkey to Europe across this stretch of water. This lady was so crippled with sort of depression stuff, she wouldn't take, she would never even, you know, she, she, even if it's boiling hot, she wouldn't take a shirt 
under a shirt and stuff. She had these burns and stuff. And then she had this sort of epiphany moment and um, and just embraced her hidden disfigurement and decided to turn that sort of crippling negative energy into a positive one and become a positive campaigner for people. So she's a remarkable woman. It's a lovely story. And um, and uh, and I filmed it and uh, put it all together and put it into film festivals. And it's won, uh, it's won an award. It's been nominated seven times for other awards and stuff like that. And um, what's brilliant about it was not, not that awards really matter, but prior to that, I'd, I'd never won anything in my life and the only thing I'd ever been nominated for was Rear of the Year. <laughs> no! <laughs> like, so, so like, I think Cosmopolitan <laughs> 1996 year of the rear, rear of the Year, which I lost by a hair. Um, who, but, uh, who, who won it? Who rear beat your some, rear? Some bum. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, it, it, was it Dean Gaffney? It was probably Dean Gaffney. That guy, <laughs> he's got some buns. Um, <laughs> You've got a lovely bum though, mate, to be, to be fair. Got a lovely bottom. Thanks very much. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's, there's that bromance again. Oh yeah, yeah. But um, <laughs> but yeah, it's like well waxed beach. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so it, it's been amazing. And so like, what's been <clears throat> nice is that a bit like kind of James with his um, uh, comedy and writing and and, and presenting and, and uh, as well as acting and you Kelly with your acting and your incredible voice work. Whenever <clears throat> I hear like coming up next on ITV2, I'm like Kelly. <laughs> you know, it's just like you know the go-to uh, northern northern voice. There must be there must be Mancunians up and down the country just going that Kelly, ooh, <laughs> crush a grave or whatever northern people say. Crush a grave! Oh, oh my god! god. <laughs> we can punch your whippet. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> they were <all> <laughs> north. And um, <laughs> and uh, anyway, but yeah, and what's been nice is that I've kind of never really known what my plan b was until i until i found um uh, videography just through kind of picking up a camera and doing some filming and whatnot and and just turn that into kind of it's basically become my kind of plan a really i i enjoy it as much as acting and i have some sense of control which is as as in i'm sure we'd all agree the worst the very worst thing about acting is that you have no there's no financial uh, stability whatsoever. You can earn very good money and earn literally nothing in a week, you know. And yeah. and then a year later, the, go- the government say, can we have a quarter of that stuff? You know that good money you earn? Can we have a quarter of that? And you go, well, I've spent it. I had to, <laughs> I had to keep the electricity on. They're like, yeah, don't give a shit. So can we have the money? And, uh, you know, so it's just, you just end up debt, 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 debt. You know, it's, it's very, it's very difficult. And so to find something that actually um, I really enjoy and, um, and you know, and, um, and it's doing well is, is um, yeah, it's one, it's a, it's a great relief. <laughs> so I can't believe that we've got you two on. And in all of these brilliant stories that you've been telling, Mr. Picard has not featured in many of them at all. Uh, has he got like some deal with you that you're not allowed to talk about? Because he like comes across like he's like the golden boy of Hollyoaks and no one's got any dirt to dish on him. However, so, I know different. He's so different in real life, isn't he? I mean, it, he's great. And obviously we all love him to, to bits, but he's so different because I think I was on a train once, I think going, going to some sort of press do with Nick. And, um, you know, on the show, he, uh, more so then, he was sort of... Um, the nerdy character that people sort of took the mickey out of, especially me, you know. Um, but Nick's dad was a professional boxer and Nick's quite handy, you know, and we're on this train, <laughs> we're heading, heading to London and these sort of student guys were on there, you know, and they were sort of rugby lads, you know, they're quite sort of big, big lads. And they were sort of taking the mickey out, out of us and we were sort of laughing and waving back and stuff. And they were going, Finn, legend, legend. I was going, yeah, all right, mate. Yeah. And then, then they started being really quiet, sort of derogatory towards Nick, you know, saying you're this and you're that. And he was laughing and sort of waving back and stuff. And then they got up and started doing it to him. And he grabbed one and went, hey, I'm going to knock you out. Like that. Like, Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and jumped back and went, I ain't having you carry me off on here. And he went, whoa. Like, yeah. He was like, yeah. Is, hold my jacket. And I was going, no, I'm going to hold you, mate. <laughs> yeah. He is, like Nick's, he is amazing. And I, he's kind of, he's lovely. He's and the brilliant thing as well with Nicky is it like if you don't see him for a few years, you just <laughs> you just pick up from where you left off. You know, I was up there um, recently and I went out to just <laughs> there's remember that pub opposite the the studios. Yeah, 
Yeah. The Chilwells. I can't Chilwell remember. Abbey. Yeah, yeah. I went I went to the Abbey and survived. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um and yeah, and it just we just sort of sat there with Jimmy and Nick and I just sort of chewing the card and stuff and it was just it was just the same. The thing is with Nick as well is that what you can't ever tell from telly is that Nick has zero equilibrium. He cannot he cannot walk in a straight line. He cannot do it. And he's never been able to, like, stone cold, sober, only drinking water. You walk down the street with him, you're chatting away, and like, eh? he's over there. Yeah. He just he just can't walk in a straight line. And yeah, I remember friends, once. It was a really cold day once. Is, is this, is this, what, this uh, is probably the same story, but, he, on, but Nick, 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 we were filming outside again, outside that little um, convenience. That freezing was, cold. Yeah, it's freezing. We were all out there. And Nick was really knackered, and and it was just because often, you know, remember Kelly, you would sit, sit there and you do you'd have to do tons of scenes, absolutely knackered, and you work till late, and you first up, and they break, you know, keep working and keep working, and worked you hard because there wasn't many of us, well, many of us back then were there, but um, and Nick was really tired, and he was asleep and stuff like that, and a little little zoos, and he was like, right, Nick, can you have a sip, please? And he dug his hands really deep in his pockets, and he came out, came out the out the shop, he's like. Oh, cool, cool, let's do it. And he carried up walking and he started falling. And rather than to like stop or get his hands out of his pockets, he kept his hands in his pockets and just staggered. Like, and all of us are just watching him just go past. And literally landed on his face. He was like a like a penguin. Yeah, I was really worried. I thought he'd really hurt himself. Yeah, it's like a, like watching a, to- a tottering penguin just <laughs> just f- f- and he just kind of fell on the floor just like. <sighs> yeah, but well, yeah. The other thing about 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 Nicky is that I mean, I, as someone who struggled with learning lines, I better now was that Nick, like you, Kelly, can learn. He can look at like they'll they'll say right, well, someone's called in sick, so we've actually had to pull forward next Thursday scenes, all of them, uh, to now. And I'm thinking, shit, I haven't even looked at them yet. You know, and Nick goes, I haven't either. And he'll look and he's got all the lines. He's got reams and reams, like long speeches of that. And he'll look. OK, and he'll do them. Yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. And one time we were, I think we were in France, Ben, doing some sort of special episode. Uh, and I we was in on front fleur, of, we were in on fleur, weren't we? Yeah. Fleur, and I yeah. was in the front of a car, I, I think. And Nick had lines with me and he was in the back. I think you and I were in the front of the car and he was asleep. We could hear him snoring. Right. And then they, and then the, the first idea I think was Colin Melia went and action like to wake Nick up. He went Zip, and did his first speech perfect. The whole like <laughs> a page and a half. And then I went, oh, it's our line. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was watching and wow, yeah. I can't believe you were still, what? It's just amazing. <laughs> There was a there was a what Nick is also <laughs> Nick has got a notoriously stinky bottom as well. He's <clears throat> he's he's cleared. There's, there's I remember. Do you know it was actually it was captured on film. We were it was T4 did it. We were going over. We we're filming again. We we're finding the backstory about Finn. And um, so James had all the work to do. The rest of us were just having a laugh. It was great. And um, and uh, I just remember going over in the minibus and Nick just farting solidly. Do you remember? And so it's yeah. filmed, and you could just see people just sort of all laughing and mucking about, and because we, we were given a camera by T4 to go and film. So I think I've still got it, Kelly, if you want any of it. But, yes, but, definitely. But, <laughs> yeah, but, but they, we, we were all sort of filming stuff, just oh, yeah, just chatting away. At which point you just you, you just see Nick just going <laughs> in the back, and then, and, and then just like the stench of death, yeah. just like. Like, you know, <laughs> evil. I think that's what he enjoyed because you know I I don't mind a fart. You know, it's a funny noise. It makes me laugh. But his is more evil than that. He, yeah. he wants to do one silently and then waits for the bus. To... <laughs> yeah, yeah. And or he just he just you just lean across and just slip the lock on and just <laughs> just have a little wait and a think. And you'd I be remember... like. <laughs> I remember being doing scenes because I think when we first joined it was I think it was Diva the cafe and Nick was working Jeez. as the chef in it and I remember like going for take and he'd just let out a fart <laughs> just before a take and you'd yeah. be stood doing the lines with him and you'd look at him and you'd be thinking you little fucker but you'd just <laughs> carry on doing these lines with this stink under your nose because yeah. you knew you couldn't stop it and go oh, I'm sorry we need to go again because Nick's just farted because we just didn't have the time uh, and he used to do that a lot that was like his party trick yeah, yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't sort of know it because he's you know he's obviously been in the show for 25 years and he's so good and his, yeah. his character's so straight laced but he's a real I mean 
he's a real leader too. I think he sort of gets everyone together doing stuff together. Like we, there's a football team and nights out and all that. But he's a big practical joke. I remember once I had, I went back recently. I think it was about 2000, no, it was two years ago. Um, I went back for some scenes and I had this big emotional scene with him where I had to tell him that I missed him and all this stuff. And we're talking about his, my relationship with his mum and all this big sort of, you know, I had this big sort of speech and I was just bouncing about trying to get my head into the space of, you know, am I going to be able to cry in this scene? Am I going to be able to get angry? I need to just sort of access that. And I'm ready at that. I'm just about to go for a take. And he went, James, and he just dropped his um, wife front and went, look at that. And I went, action. I went, oh. <laughs> I think brilliant because the photographer was there taking pictures you know they do those pictures where they say can you recreate this episode the whole storyline for a soap, a soap magazine so it's like you know lewis and finn have fall, sort of fallen out was so it matt, was it matt, matt squire was it matt, it was john squire from the, the guitarist from the stone roses his brother that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he was lovely. And he was just like yeah. the Stone Roses at the time with like the biggest band in the country. His brother was the, the official Hollyoak photographer. So it's one of those ones that I was chatting to him and he said, yeah, what did you do last night? Well, I went to my brother's band. I went, oh, he's your brother. And he went, John Squire. You know, he goes, go. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, wow. Yeah. yeah. And he was like just a brilliant photographer as well. Sorry, Jim. Go on. Yeah. Sorry. It was not that bigger joke really but i think i'm kind of ruin it now by talking too much but i can carry on talking just to take the steam out of it all together <laughs> we can cut this go on, go on, carry on, mate. <laughs> so i think i think yeah he was on set or his um the guy who took his place was, was on set taking pictures you know and you've got to sort of uh, condense a whole six episodes into one photo so it's like well lewis has been uh, gambling losing all, all the money at the loft Finn's just just found out he's not happy at that point, which takes six episodes to play out. But we've got to do it in one picture. So so Ben's doing this. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That is good. That is good though. That is... I've got it in there. So so we're doing. I mean, I think we were on set, and it was all about my return, and you know, making amends with uh, Tony, or whatever. And I think the picture that they used in all the soap magazines was, was me laughing my head off and, and Nick going like this because <laughs> he just got his willy out and that, but they couldn't see that in the picture. <laughs> Use that shot. I was going, no, no, no. That was, we didn't mean that one. Oh my God. Brilliant. Uh, I mean, it was a it was a fantastic show. It still is a fantastic show. But I think looking at um, <clears throat> your time that you had there and certainly the time that I had there, it did feel like you made friends for life. And that was one of the brilliant things about it. Yeah, yeah I think I think the only sad thing is that we're so far flung, you know, because people were from all over. Because I think um, Phil Redmond cleverly sort of thought, well, I've got Grange Hill, which has got kids watching it. I've got Brookside, which is for adults families kind of thing will put this sort of middle age group show on and then spread around it so you know it, it attracted teenagers first and then he in introduced the university and the students and he sort of kept that age group of fan watching as they got older it's because it's like you know tony's now 40 mm. whatever and he introduced kids as well like with the school so it kind of expanded to sort of take all three age groups whatever what was the point i was i was uh, going to make yeah but so with the fact that we were in it when the university was sort of starting out, there were actors there from all over. I mean, I'm, I'm from Bristol. Where the fuck is Bristol? You know, <laughs> no one knew where it was when I, I joined, you know, and we're all from different parts of the country. <laughs> I wish we saw each other more, but it's hard when you've got families now and you're living in different areas, you know. Even Benny, I don't, I don't see Ben as much as I'd like to, you know, because he's out. That's the restraining order, though. We've talked about this. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant yeah. um so i think that's kind of us for the show guys and i just Aww. want to say i know thank you so much for coming on i really appreciate it and it's been an absolute ball seeing and listening to your time on hollyoaks as well so thank you very much thank you what, 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 what was the fee again kelly yeah there what was, was a fee um about. yeah speak to mike about that um Great. yeah 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 cool. yeah Great. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> thank you really? very much yeah loved it cool. thank you um, coming up on next week's show, guys, we've got Bernie Latham and we can ask him all about that night at the Soap Awards and <laughs> Matt Littler. <laughs> See you next week, guys, 7.30. No, it's not. See you next week, guys, Thursday, 8.30 on YouTube.